the Board of Land and Natural Resources granted the application. Um, and then in that same hearing that followed said, well, we're not going to give you your, your uh, chance for a contested case hearing. Um, after they already ruled, albeit what they called a conditional approval, which was, subsequent, which was essentially nothing more than saying we're going to stay construction until we hold these contested case hearings. Why would the Board of Land and Natural Resources make a conditional finding to begin with? There's nothing in our rules that allow for it. There's um, completely arbitrary and capricious. Uh, so my question is, is there some way in which it's prohibited and does that rule have any bearing at all in whether this was appropriate or not in your view? Certainly, due process, um, a, a meaningful time in a meaningful manner. Uh, is certainly uh, in the right to be heard. Uh, the right to be heard before a, a decision is made, bef uh, before a quote unquote conditional decision is to be made, um, that's what's critical here. If, if in every instance where somebody makes a request for a contested case before the agency has voted on an application, then you have to stop everything, hold the contested case, and the agency could be waving their hands and saying, we're, we're going to deny that one. You don't have to go bother to have a contested case. You have an opportunity as the participant requesting the hearing for testimony that's under oath. You can cross-examine. And you get an opportunity to therefore pr focus on the evidence in front of the decision maker, hopefully causing them to make a decision in your favor. You sort of you forfeit that opportunity if the decision is made ahead of time, right? So your interest that you're describing on behalf of the public in that you give them the benefit of knowing what the decision is going to be so they can decide whether to have a contested case or not, do you really think that that outweighs the interests of a member of the public of getting those extra due process protections and being able to present the evidence before a board that hasn't made a decision yet? I think due process, I think process that was due and above and beyond was afforded here. Well, that may be your point of view, but under the law, the difference between the legislative context where you have a public hearing and the quasi-judicial context where the board is sitting in a contested case under the law is considered to provide greater due process protections. That's just the, the settled law. In this case, um, the administrative agency was ruling in a quasi-judicial function. Uh, in terms of the contested case hearing, it is a quasi-judicial function, not an executive function or a legislative function, which is the rulemaking function of an administrative agency. There are certain fundamentals of just procedure which are the same for every type of tribunal and every type of proceeding. A fair trial in a fair tribunal is a basic requirement of due process. Justice must not only be done, but manifestly be seen to be done. So. If an administrative agency is dealing in a quasi-judicial function, it's acting in a way in which a court would act, would, do you think that due process would allow a court, for example, in a trial, uh, in a situation in which a plaintiff files a lawsuit, for the judge to say, here is my judgment in favor of the plaintiff. We will now have a trial. <clears throat> And, um, and if you convince me otherwise, I'll change my mind. Courts routinely are presented with situations when they are called upon to make a preliminary determination on the merits. I was they a trial judge for a long time. I don't recall ever making a decision where I decided the case before the trial. No, Your Honor. Uh, I'm, and indeed, that did not happen here. What well, did, well what, I think it did. Well, At least the argument can be made. The permit was issued. Uh, you had a permit that said, essentially, this permit cannot be acted upon. And no, it can only, that's not what it said. And what it, it can only ever be acted upon after a contested case hearing is held, if the university prevails, and then after the BLNR file, following the contested case, the full contested case hearing that the BLNR itself ordered be held, 
is resolved in favor, in, that the BLNR renders a final decision in favor of the application going forward. So, so the permit... The permit actually approved the TMT management plan, did it not? It did. And that certainly wasn't conditioned. So you only have one condition in this entire permit that is stayed. And a stay is, complete, is, is something completely different than conditioning something. It just means that here's your permit and you cannot go forward with one specific item. And in fact, there was at least one written request already for a contested case hearing, correct? There was really no um, perfected um, contested case hearing, I don't think, at the board meeting. Because the facts You can't were, perfect until afterwards. It no, takes no, no, no. Um, I think if in, in Kila Kila, for example, they, they made both oral requests and written requests early and often. So they had a bunch of oral and written requests. And, 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 and at that point, I, you know, under the, under the Kila Kila case, um, I think the board should have just said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna hold this contested case. However, in this particular case, um, we had, or we Can had some- Can I read some you your own rules? Your own rules say that it has to be both, uh, oral written must be made no later than the close of the board meeting. And then it also says, an agency or person so requesting must also file a written petition with the board no later than 10 calendar days after the close of the board meeting. I'd like to ask you something else, and that is, let's suppose that the university had not prevailed at the contested hearing. What would you have done with the permit that had already been issued? The, the new permit, um, basically um, supplanted the old, the I'm old asking. And, and, and if they did not, and if they did not um, w prevail at the contested case hearing, the board would have voted to deny um, a permit. But the permit was granted. There was one condition stayed. In any case where a, a permittee has failed to comply with any of the conditions contained in a permit, the board may direct the chairperson to revoke the permit. That hadn't occurred because even if the stay um, was in effect, they hadn't failed to comply. So you couldn't revoke a permit under that provision. And, it, and I'm quoting from Justice Nakayama's uh, majority opinion in Kila Kila. Furthermore, as KOH argued, and I'm quoting, nothing in BLNR's rules would allow it to first grant a, a conservation district use permit, second, conduct a formal contested hearing and then revoke the conservation district use permit. And then uh, Justice Jacoba in the minority says the same thing. As KOH argued, there's nothing in the rules that would provide for a revocation of the permit in the event that KOH prevailed in the contested case hearing. In fact, I think the only way you can revoke it is if you go to court. And then I, I was trying to think through this, that you would go to court and say, Judge, would you please revoke the permit that we just issued because we improperly issued it? I you know, I mean, I, I, I think that the board did have the power and authority to revoke the permit. But more importantly, I think Can that... Can you point to a provision? I couldn't find any reported cases um, in which this process had been followed where the board actually issued a permit and then had a contested case hearing. And that, I'm just, that's why I'm asking, when did the board start adopting this process? I can't recall. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Okay. Mm. Do you think that the process that the BLNR followed here um, furthers public confidence in the system? I, I yes, I do. I think, I think, I, I... I ask folks, please don't respond if you can verbally so that the, the lawyer can focus on the questions and her answers. Thank you so much. I, I really think I really think they do. I mean, I think I think that that just as a court um, goes into its decisions with you know without having say, said you know I prejudge this and without any evidence that this matter was prejudged, I believe that the board. Um, what do you mean? There's no, no. What do you mean? There's no evidence of prejudge. They voted on it. They granted the permit. 
Well, the court makes decisions too. And what if it's remanded back to the same circuit court? Have have they they've made a decision? Have they prejudged? Are, are are we? Is it is it always to be? You know the the presumption of 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 you know of, of not being fair because just because you were the you were the you you looked at it earlier and in fact when the board looked at it in the first place they were not they were not acting as a tribunal they were acting as the land board and then when it came back to them they were acting as the tribunal 